Hello everyone, and welcome back to some more news related to Mountain Blade Bannerlord. But today we're going to be talking about two previous blog posts released that have to do with the crime and punishment system and the Q&A featuring Tail World's very own Paul Califf. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. In Bannerlord, it features a new crime system that keeps track of the player's misdeeds and determines how the endgame world will respond to them. The aim of the system is to keep the player in check while offering a deeper experience that allows for players to take a different path throughout the game. We are able to perform a different variety of actions that are considered to be illegal in Calradia. These range from petty crimes such as smuggling in goods to things that can be considered a little more serious such as raiding a caravan and butchering its escort. Each kingdom keeps track of your crimes individually, so performing hostile actions in one territory won't necessarily affect your gameplay in another. The system also assigns a numeric value to our committed crimes based off the severity of them alongside the three brackets they've implemented. Crimes can either fall under mild, moderate, or severe. Petty crimes can expect to see a minor level of disruption to the operations, but not enough to dissuade them from committing further crimes. Ones that fall into the moderate bracket will be barred from entering certain settlements where they are deemed to be an outlaw. While finally, the last bracket will consider the player a great threat to the peace and stability of the realm, which will be big consequences if they're ever captured. There will be the option to pay off your crimes, however, the higher your crime rate to begin with, the more coming out of your pocket. Sometimes even that won't save you, and actual punishment will need to be carried out. If you are a vassal of a kingdom in which you committed crimes, you may be able to exert some influence to have the charges dropped which also might tie into the persuasion system. If you are the ruler, however, and commit a crime, then you have absolutely nothing to worry about, except the hatred of your lords, and of course, the prosperity of your realm taking a hit. You also have the ability to don the sneaking disguise again to sneak past enemy guards while infiltrating a settlement. This time we'll even be able to issue bribes for guards to turn a blind eye when we visit. This is a system that will end up being one of my more favorites to play around with, as early on, for my first playthroughs, I like to go on the outlaw path, raising enemy villages and selling their own goods right back to them. Can't wait to skyrocket that crime rate. For the next part, we'll be going into the discussion about the Q&A featuring Paul Califf, who is a level designer and assistant game designer for Tail Worlds. His days usually involve creating slash maintaining scenes for both single player and multiplayer, including working on a documentation for feature designs alongside the multiplayer balancing sheet. Something I've been looking forward to this time around is the multiplayer aspect of the game. If someone's able to make a mod for the game that allows the capability of co-op campaign, even if it's native, I would fall in love with that one. The most difficult thing he's solved is tackling the task of balancing multiplayer. There's such a broad variety of weapons and classes, each with their own individual perks, which means keeping them balanced can be quite challenging sometimes. Each faction as well as each class within that faction should have their individual advantages and disadvantages which need to be evaluated. When asked what he's currently working on, aside from the multiplayer balance, he also spends time on the single player and multiplayer scenes as we talked about before. He goes into some detail about this aspect while showcasing a screenshot of what this might have looked like from the point of interest aspect that he was working on after the first paper concept. The last few things that he goes into have to do with the factions being built to be viable across different game modes, or if they're evenly matched across the board in most contexts. The question is, would one faction perform well in sieges but be next to useless in open field battles? To which he replies that they are working on making factions as viable as possible in any scenario. The way they design multiplayer gives them a great deal of opportunities to make that happen. For each troop class, we will be given individual item loadouts, skill perks, and armor plus speed values, eventually making each and every class via multiplayer useful in their own ways along with the factions themselves. In relation to Warband, they also change the movement speed of your character based on the situation. For instance, making you slow down speed-wise as you engage in combat while retaining a steady speed in normal mode. And with that, that is all the news we have for this week for Bandalord. Thank you all very, very much for joining me for this one, and remember to stay frosty while we wait for this game. Farewell.